Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning, another beautiful day. And this is a really special day because it's our new Members Sunday, so we look forward to that as well. <clears throat> Would just like to remind you, if you didn't see it on your way um, coming in, you can use make a veil of it on your way out. Uh, the youth are doing a car wash. Uh, there is no car washing during the worship service, um, but before and after, you know, there are all kinds of ways that you can wash your car. So please help the youth with their um, their <clears throat> their finances and it will help us to also um, get our cars cleaned as well. Um, like I said, we have new members today. We also will be praying today for the family of Frida Rebeline. Uh, Frida was a longtime member here and she has most recently lived over at Blue Earth in a care center there and um, she died yesterday. So we hold her family in, in our prayers. Um, I think I would like to now call on Russ Elmer. He has something for us to hear. You have an information sheet in your bulletin about the anniversary dinner. I want to add on a few things to that because we've been asked questions on it. Um, the Wildcat is catering the dinner on Saturday night and will be roasted sirloin and rosemary chicken. And what we did do is try to, lim we are limiting the cost to $10 uh, be because of fundraisers and donations. But we'd like to order, have you order the tickets if possible by next week. Uh, we need to have some numbers. And also we want you to sign up for the brunch, which will be catered by Kim's Cuisine and that'll be uh, uh, scrambled egg, sausage, uh, cinnamon rolls, muffins, and fresh fruit. We also need numbers on that to, est on, to estimate and giving them. So we don't know if there's going to be 200, 300 people on Sunday. Uh, it would help if you'd let us know if you are coming, if you have any intention at all. But Saturday night there is limited, uh, we're limited to 200 tickets for that. We also have a sign-up list uh, on the back, on the doors for host and hostess, aim tags, assist in kitchen and photographers and serve coffee after the program on that day. So if you please help us out and the tickets are on sale at the doors after church. So thank you. Good morning. Please stand for the gathering song, Shout to the Lord, found in the ELW page 821 and we will sing through that twice.
We turn to page 94 in the front of our red hymnal, um, and we will be using the words in the second column as we join together in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now silently confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. <coughs> Please remain standing for the greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You join me for the Kyrie found on page in the front part of the hymnal on page 138. I will read the light print and you will respond with the dark print. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this host, holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. join me for the prayer of the day. O oh Lord God, you teach us that without love our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your Spirit we may know goodness and peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Like I mentioned earlier, this is a special day because we are going to welcome some new members into our congregation. And so at this time, I would like to have those families come forward. Um, I will read their names as, as they come. There's Ryan, Amy, Aiden, and Jay's Crabtree, and also Rick and Pam Baird. So please come forward. While they are coming forward, if you turn to the back of your bulletin, um, I think that will be helpful for you. Want to come a little farther forward? Dear friends in Christ, you have presented yourselves to us for membership in Good Shepherd Congregation. Therefore, I ask you, do you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And are you ready to serve him in the fellowship of Good Shepherd? As members of Good Shepherd, will you worship and commune regularly? Will you seek to grow in your faith? Will you support the congregation's mission with your time and prayers and abilities and resources? Will you support the leaders of the parish and your fellow members with love and encouragement? Will you seek, a life to, a, seek to live a life that bears witness to the love that we share in Christ? Now, fellow members of Good Shepherd, you have heard the commitment of these new members. Will you receive them in the love of Christ? Pray for them, minister to and with them, and seek together with them to glorify Christ. I then declare these brothers and sisters to be members of Good Shepherd, partners with us in the work and praise of Jesus Christ. So if you turn around, then we can introduce you. We have um, Ryan, and we have Amy, and Aiden, and Jace Crabtree, and then we have Rick and Pam Baird. So let us give them a warm Good Shepherd welcome. And each of you families will be um, given one of our cookbooks from the Welka. So you're welcome. Good to have you with us. The choir will now sing the anthem, My Life Flows On in Endless Song.
Danielle Johansson will share the scripture with us. Good morning. The first lesson is from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. In defense of his earlier baptism of pagan believers, Peter demonstrates to the members of the Jerusalem church that God's intention to love Gentiles as well as Jews is revealed in Jesus' own testimony. In this way, the mission to the Gentiles is officially authorized. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and the birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how we had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, now he, now he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, The God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The second lesson is from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. John's vision shows us that in the resurrection, the new age has dawned. God dwells with us already, yet we wait for the time when the tears that cloud our vision will be wiped away. Then we will see the new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven, and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be, the, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the sp spring of the water of life. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. You'll find that in the front part of the ELW, page 142. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, 
God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. At this time, I would invite um, the children to come forward. And while they are coming forward to sit up here with Julie, I'm going to remind you that um, after you are finished with worship today, there is a yummy breakfast downstairs. So don't forget to come for breakfast. First of all, um, you know on television sometimes they show a, a show two times and they call it a rerun. Well, this is a rerun of a children's sermon because the last time I did it, we had Mutchlers here and nobody else. So it was such a good one, I said they could be my helpers. You want to come help? <laughs> so one of the things, we're all twisted up, hang on. Oh, thanks. Oh, well, I'm so glad you're here. You can help me. Do you remember what it was? Do you? Um, when we pray, sometimes it's really hard to remember what it is we should pray for. In the Bible, and we all know, the Lord's Prayer is called the Lord's Prayer because somebody said, how are we supposed to pray? We don't know what to say. And so everybody all over the world that says the Lord's Prayer says those same words. Now, as kids, when you're home at night, or first thing in the morning, or around the table with your family, sometimes you have things that you pray and you say the same thing every time, right? Does anybody have a table grace that you can remember that you always say? Come Lord Jesus, you know that one? Say it with me. Come Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. Wonderful. Now, we know that so well, and so we know what to say. Well, I have another prayer that we can all learn. It'll be just for you, though, but it has some guidelines. So first, I need you to put your hands together like you're praying. Thank you very much. And the thing that's pointing at you, what's that? Thumb. Your thumb. So we need to remember that their thumb is the closest thing to our hearts. So first we pray for the people who are closest to our hearts. <laughs> that might be mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, brothers and sisters, okay? Next finger is the pointer, all right? This finger reminds us to pray for the people who point us in the right direction. So who helps you do the right things? Moms and dads. Moms and dads. Who else? Grandmas and grandpas. Who else? Aunts and uncles. Aunts and uncles. Oh, boy. How about Monday through Friday? <laughs> Teachers. Thank you. Yeah, we were waiting for that one. They do a lot, don't they? Okay, so that reminds us to pray for the people who point us in the right direction. The next finger, if we hold our hands this way, put them up, is the tall man. Okay, we used to call that the tall man in school. Do you still do that? No? Okay. Anyway, this one reminds us to pray for our leaders. Who would be the leader in your school? Teachers. Teachers? Who else? Who leads the teachers? <coughs> the office. The office, but who's in that office? 
The principal, Jackie, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to tell her that, won't we? <laughs> Excellent. The fourth finger is the ring finger. Find that one. Okay. Scientists tell us our ring finger is the weakest finger in our hand. If you're learning to play the piano or an instrument, you'll know that. That's the weakest finger that you have. So that reminds us to pray for all the people who are weaker than we are, who are hungry, or maybe they're sick. Okay? Then the very last one is your pinky. Find your pinky. <coughs> it's the smallest finger. Yep. And the Bible says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. So this finger is about you. But look where it is on your hand. It's the last one and the smallest one. So to think about all those other people first when you pray. Okay? So what I have for you to take back to your seats is that list. And this is where I need your help. So when you go back to your seats, it says, trace your hand in this empty space. Label your fingers, one, two, three, four, five, and put a list in those fingers if you can write who you're going to pray for. And then you can take it home and help you remember. Thanks for coming up. Thank you. Thanks, helpers. Thank you, Julie. Let's see. One, two, three. <laughs> the pinky. Okay. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. So as today's Bible story unfolds, we first hear of creation and God's wondrous acts of deliverance. We are comforted, but eventually we will hear this beckoning to serve God, who comforts us, calls us, and yes, God even changes us. There are times when we desperately need to hear that message. We think back to when we are fed up with ourselves. We are exhausted from disappointing others. We are heartsick because we continue to live like hypocrites. And it is then that we are offered the opportunity to change our lives. We are offered a relief, so to speak. It's a gift of grace. So instead of wallowing around in the sadness around our lives in this world, we find instead an opportunity for newness that sounds like just what we need. In other times, we would rather not even hear about being made new. For those are the times that we wish God would just get out of our case and let us be alone. And it's on those days that we are locked into ourselves and contemptuous of anyone, anyone who would dare to want to change any of us. I'll have to admit to you that there is a warning that comes along with this sermon. So, ready or not, willing to be changed or not willing to be changed, here comes an announcement of God's desire that we are all to be changed. So are you all ready? Then here we go. This new commandment to love is not a bolt out of the blue. It's not the first time that God has asked for something new. There was a time when God changed the menus and told the faithful people that they could eat something new. Jesus and his disciples had inherited these century-old dietary laws, something that we don't have to be afflicted with, and they came from their ancestors. These laws told them what they could eat and what they couldn't eat. 
By adhering to these laws, they sensed a set apartness from the rest of the world and reminded them that they were God's chosen people. Jesus' earliest followers affirmed their plans to continue with this prescribed way of eating. That is, until good old Peter, one of their leaders, heard the summons to change in one of his dreams. If you wish to read the story later today, you can turn to, page, or to Acts chapter 11, and that will help you to hear the full story. But I think that we can safely say this is not one of those ordinary dreams that Peter has. It was a life changer. God met Peter in this dream and announced that non-kosher food was now okay. Nearly every effort that we have that could describe this dream understates the true magnitude of the change. Perhaps you are one who tries to practice healthy living. Do any of you like to practice healthy living? Yeah, I see some heads nodding. That's good. If so, this dream of Peter would be much like us hearing a voice from God that tells us to smoke, to eat all the fatty foods we want. Now that doesn't sound like the right thing, does it? So imagine the reaction that your friends would have when you tell them about this dream. Why did God want Peter to set aside the special kosher diet? The story of Jesus, born, died, and risen to new life, was in the possession of only those who ate kosher foods and this was not acceptable to God. God realized that there were others in the world that would be those of other races and religion who ate other foods, who needed to hear the story of Jesus. And because people need to hear the story of Jesus, that is the reason that God told Peter, as well as the others, to set aside those special diets and practices in order to meet and eat with the Gentiles. That would be the non-kosher eaters. <coughs> Centuries of kosher eating disappeared all because of Peter's dream. And all Peter could say in response to his friend's questions was, well, who was I that I could get in God's way? And God told him to change not only his menu, but also his outlook on life, on those who were different than he was. God announced something new in that last book of the Bible that would be the book, that would be the book of Revelation. God spoke to John in a vision during a time of intense Christian persecution, something that we've never had to deal with. And in the vision, John saw this new heaven and a new earth as he heard God's voice say, I am making all things new. John had every reason to be anxious and fearful. We would understand him if he dreamed about a restoration of the glorious past. For when we are fearful, we too find it easy to return to those good old days, whatever they might be for you. But the vision that God gave John in order to grant him new courage and hope was that God was going to make all things new. So what is it that's new? No death, no crying, no pain, and most importantly, to have God with us all of the time. Imagine God making all things new. Imagine ourselves encouraged by this welcome newness as God's gift. Imagine Jesus' followers embracing this new vision of what God is doing, even in our world today. 
This vision was fully fleshed out in Jesus' new commandment when he said to love one another. There was Peter's dream, there was John's vision, and then there was Jesus' commandment. It's not really that new because all of the descendants of Abraham and Sarah already knew that commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. But perhaps what is new is Jesus' own twist on things. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. He has given them an example. Jesus showed them how to love. And God is behind our dreams, our visions, and even the commandments in order to shake us out of our contentment and our self-centeredness to help us embrace God's newness. So what newness is God calling us to do? We can ponder about that over the coming week. What is God's newness calling us to do? For one thing, God encourages us to step out of our cynicism and not to be a skeptic. We are called to trust God's way of grace, love, and forgiveness that ultimately triumph over hatred, greed, and competition. So we are left knowing that we are no, no longer in despair. We can stop the gloom and doom and replace that with the power of hope. Our yearning for a better day is just one step in the process of that better day entering into each of our lives. This powerful gift of God's mere presence was once a fulfillment of a promise, a fulfilled promise of God's faithfulness. We are reminded to repent which means to turn around, to change, and be made new. That is a message that will never be out of date. It helps us to remember that we are not to get so stuck in our ways of doing things. It isn't always about us. It's about others. You see, our faithful God used dreams, visions, and a new commandment to capture the attention of those seeking to follow Jesus' way. Those followers were shaken to the core of their beliefs and transformed so that God's work could enter the world. We do not underestimate God's willingness to change, even us. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to take out your ELW and turn to hymn number 638, and we will sing Blessed Assurance. Let us stand as we sing.
Please join me for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and the ushers will collect the offering. Please remain seated for the offertory response with High Delight, Let Us Shine, verses 1 and 3, found in the ELW, page 368. You may kneel or sit for the prayers of the church. Rejoicing with all the witnesses of the resurrection, let us pray in confidence for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Bless those who live and serve in other lands, including our companion synods in Bogota, Colombia, the Central Diocese in Tanzania, as well as our partner congregation, Kinnebayan Lutheran, and our missionaries, the Lostrums. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who spread the news of Jesus in our community, including our Savior Lutheran in Cleveland, 
People of Hope in Rochester, Grace Lutheran in Peterson, and Little Cedar Lutheran in Adams. Inspire your church to embody the love you reveal in grace through acts of kindness, generosity, and care for each other, the community, and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort those in the service, including J.B. Wilner, Jared Detloff, Daniel Hipper, Jared Billings, Alex Raymaker, Mitch Meyer, Joshua Kaufman, Keith Latterell, Mike Kaufman, Joshua Hansen, Loda Mat Logan Maticola, Brandon Raisler, Kevin Stern, Eric Trepto, and Mike Mall. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew the face of the earth and heal the wrongs we have done to your creation. Keep us from squandering the abundant resources you provide. Grant visions of justice and peace to leaders of the nations of the world. Put an end to the divisions that cause violence and hatred. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew the spirits of those who suffer in mind or body. Grant hope in the midst of despair, companionship to those who are alone, and heal to those who are sick. especially Shannon Royce, Stu Fullerton, Caroline Tachi, Jan Helfritz, Bill Niebuhr, Sue Henshi, and those we named silently in our hearts. Grant healing, companionship, and hope to all who live in fear. Lord, in your mercy, Break down the barriers that prohibit us from reaching out in love to all God's children. Move us beyond economic, racial, and classic distinctions in our service to those in need. Inspire your church to embody the love you reveal in grace through acts of kindness, generosity, and care for each other, the community, and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort us with the joy of Christ's resurrection and renew us in the hope of everlasting life. Today we ask your presence and comfort be with the friends and families of Les Tiedemann and Frida Rebline and as we mourn their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In resurrection hope, we commend to all for whom we pray. Trusting in the promise of new life through Jesus Christ, our Savior, is risen Savior. Amen. And they taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please stand and share the peace.
don't think they could ever say that we're shy Lutherans. What do you think? <laughs> um, before the benediction, I would just like to remind you one more time. What do you think I'm going to say? Thank you. Breakfast. Okay. And we have God's benediction. The Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord's face shines on you and is gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with glory and Jesus' peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for the sending song, Let, let Us Talents and Tongues Employed. Found in the ELW page 674.